In the aftermath of World War II, Germany and Japan found themselves facing harsh conditions from the Allies. The Treaty of Berlin split Germany and Austria into occupational zones, while Japan was occupied by the United States and its empire dissolved. On the other hand, when Italy signed their peace treaty in Paris in 1947, a much more moderate deal was made. The deal included giving up the African colonies, ceding small amounts of land to Yugoslavia, Greece and France, a grand total of 360 million US dollars in war reparations and the partial seizures of the navy, with the latter being lifted a few years later with Italy joining NATO. Unlike for Germany or Japan, no military occupation was enforced, no territorial partition was made between the Allies and no Nuremberg trials were held for Italian fascist high commands. Why Italy, the Spain being one of the major Axis powers during the war, was not subjected to the same level of military control or harsh conditions as Germany or Japan? What was the reason behind this decision taken by the Allies? Did the Allies just not have Italy's position in the Mediterranean in their strategic interest? Or was the light treatment deliberate to gain Italy as a willing Western ally as tension grows with the USSR? In this episode of History Pills, we will explore and analyze the reasons behind this decision. We will explore how this decision impacted Italy, leading to the economic miracle in the later 50s. And finally, see how this put the foundation for the creation of the European Union. On the 3rd of September 1943, the Kingdom of Italy, with the approvals by both Italian King Victor Emmanuel III and Marshal Badoglio, the Italian Prime Minister at the time, signed an armistice with the Allies. The signing of the treaty prompted an immediate reaction from the Germans that were forced to occupy northern and central Italy. A month later, on the 13th of October 1943, the new Italian government established in Brindisi, southern Italy, declared war on their former Axis-allied Germany and on their puppet state, the Italian Social Republic led by Mussolini in northern Italy. This unique situation meant the beginning of a civil war in Italian territory. A war where the new Italian government, alongside the partisan movements in northern Italy, heavily collaborated with the Allies providing resources, intelligence, logistics, and manpower support. It is in this context that analysis shall be made about the reasons of why a relatively soft deal between the Allies and Italy was made a few years later. The decision not to occupy nor divide Italy after World War II was indeed the result of a combination of political, military and strategic consideration we shall now discuss. We will go through three main points and analyze each of them. Number one, Italy's geography and the Allies need to collaborate with the fascist government. Even though the initial invasion of Sicily that had begun on the 9th of July 1943 to the soft underbelly of Europe, to put it in Churchill's word, went relatively smooth and the Italian government was quick to sign an armistice just two months later, Italy's geography made the continuation of the operation harsh and difficult. To accelerate the signing of the armistice and to keep a working and functioning government able to support the continuation of the Italian invasion, the Allies had to negotiate with the fascist high commands, like Field Marshal Badoglio, while to exploit Italian public and private resources for the war efforts, a large proportion of fascist public officials and fascist-tied business leaders had to be kept in place and indeed became close collaborators of the Anglo-American forces. But what difficulties did the Allies encounter in the Italian campaign, you may be wondering? Well, what the Allies had not understood was quickly recognized and exploited by the Germans. The narrow Italian peninsula and the highly mountainous terrain were easily defendable and almost impenetrable. Already in September 1943, days after the armistice signing, the Germans under the command of Field Marshal Albert Kesselring had built a series of defenses cutting the Italian peninsula in half. The Volturno Line and Barbara Line, the first two lines of defense created to slow down the Allied offensive while a better and proper line of defense was built, took several weeks and thousands of lives to be breached while being defended by a single German corps. From middle November 1943 till June 1944, the so-called Winter Line stopped the Allied advance to Rome for over seven months, 
designed to defend the western section of Italy, focused around the town of Monte Cassino, through which ran the important Highway 6, which led uninterrupted to Rome, the Winter Line caused the Allied troops four major offenses before being breached and hundreds of thousands of lives. The battles of Cassino and Anzio alone caused about 100,000 men to the Allied armies. Then, in central Italy, the Gothic Line will keep busy 1.2 million soldiers in the offensive. Nonetheless, will only be partially breached in April 1945, few days earlier to the German surrender. All these difficulties led to the Allies being more and more reliant on the new Italian government for supply, logistics and materials. And although Eisenhower and the American command was firm with the Italian government and demanded an unconditional surrender at the signing of the armistice, the State Department grappled with establishing a policy addressing the attractive prospect of using Italian resources and material, even leading Secretary of State Corderhull to comment that it would be difficult to impose post-war sanctions on Italy if the present attitude continued. That is, if the Italian government kept cooperating. And indeed, this eventually made it difficult for the Allies to punish the same people who had helped them. Number 2. Political voting bloc in the United States The German-American population in the United States was a very Americanized and integrated one. Unlike the Italian-American and Catholic voting blocs, who had a more complicated view of Italy, but not entirely unfavorable. Therefore, a punitive post-war policy towards Italy was not feasible. In fact, the United States supported Italy's appeal against the harsher aspects of the final peace treaty and eventually encouraged the entire treaty to be disregarded once Italy became a member of NATO in 1949. On the other hand, the growing strength of the authoritarian Soviet bloc was a more pressing concern for the United States government and voting public. They were extremely averse to getting dragged into another European war. So, the occupation of Germany was as much an effort to line up divisions and tanks along the inner German border as it was to pacify the nation that caused two great conflicts in the past 50 years. Considering this, the American voters found it challenging to stomach an additional occupation of Italy to defend against the Soviets, which would have been too much. All of this to make it much easier to encourage Italy to rearm themselves. Number 3. The Soviets The menace of the Soviets and their communist ideology spreading over the whole continent was highly frightening to the Allies. In Italy in particular, the Italian Communist Party, PCI, led by Palmiro Toyati, was gaining popularity in the country. In 1944, the party counted 500,000 members. A year later, in 1945, the same party counted 1.7 million members, making the Italian Communist Party the largest and most important communist party west of the Iron Curtain. The fear that harsh conditions and sanctions could lay a case for the Communist Party leading Italy into the Soviet sphere was real. Moreover, except for a small occupation from Yugoslavia, and watch this video for an in-depth about the post-war situations between Italians and Communist Yugoslavia, no actual Soviet troops ever entered Italian soil. This, along with the strategic position in the middle of the Mediterranean and west of the Iron Curtain, made it easy for the United States to lump Italy along with France and Britain in the category of nations to help back on their feet and in a condition to, at least partially, fend for themselves. All of these factors combined led to the Allies choosing a softer approach in Paris in 1947 when signing the peace treaty and with economic sanctions completely dropped when Italy joined NATO two years later. Moreover, with the signing on the 3rd of April by US President Truman of the Economic Recovery Act, aka Marshall Plan, the largest and most famous anti-communist action in Western Europe began. While the Marshall Plan was a Europe-wide initiative, in Italy, the country's largest economic and political power broker became the Christian Democracy Party, the only real opposition to the Italian Communist and Socialist parties that combined had received 38% of votes at the national elections. The Christian Democracy Party, founded by Alcide de Gasperi, will be the main beneficiary and mediator of the Marshall Plan, 
and of loans from the International Monetary Fund. Alcide de Gasperi, a skilled mediator that will become the first Prime Minister of the now new Italian Republic. De Gasperi will be later involved in the creation of the European Coal and Steel Community and of the Council of Europe, both of which will evolve in what we know today as the European Union, EU, that names Alcide de Gasperi as one of the 11 founding fathers. Each video takes effort, time and many resources to be produced. If you'd like to support the channel, subscribe and smash the like button. Did you know the reasons why Italy wasn't occupied after World War II? Write it in the comments. And if you know any other interesting, well, not known story, share it in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more and bye.